This is what I mean about be careful with Western media and American media. Listen to what the clown have to say. But this isn't a place, with all due respect, um, you know, like Iraq or Afghanistan that has seen conflict raging for decades. You know, this is a relatively civilized, uh, relatively European. I have to choose those words carefully, too. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's really emotional for me because I see European people with blue eyes and blonde hair being killed. Children being killed every day with Putin's missiles and his helicopters and his rockets. Now the unthinkable has happened to them. And this is not a developing third world nation. This is Europe. I mean, first off, Europe has been home to some of the worst wars and worst war crimes in human history. I mean, the Holocaust. So why this surprise that bad things are happening in Europe? And second, when they say, oh, civilized cities and in another clip, well-dressed people and this is not the third world, they really mean white people, don't they? The reason they seem to want us to care more about Ukraine, and we should care about Ukraine, but not because they're white Europeans. That shouldn't be the reason we care about Ukraine. Yeah, no, that's, that's what's so disturbing in all of this. And in fact, not only that, it's trying to make an excuse why the West should get involved and embrace these refugees and help them. Listen, let's be clear. You should encourage and actually help refugees because they are fleeing a war. I don't know if you saw this. There was a uh, op-ed today in the Telegraph. Well, I think we have. We'll put it up for our viewers to see. This was an op-ed in which uh, the writer, uh, Daniel Hannon, said that these people, the Ukrainians, they're like us. They watch Netflix. They have Instagram accounts. They read uncensored newspaper and then goes on to say that war is no longer something visited upon impoverished and remote population. Oh, no, it's happening to us here in Europe. And to your point, you're absolutely correct. They, Europe has had some of the worst human rights abuses and atrocities and wars uh, in not just modern history, in all of history. Uh, good to see you, Matthew. Greatly appreciate it, my friend. Parce que ça va être une question importante. Et je parle pas, on parle pas là de Syriens qui fuient, qui fuient les bombardements du régime syrien soutenu par Vladimir Poutine. On parle d'Européens qui partent leur voiture, qui ressemble à nos voitures, qui prennent la route et qui essayent juste de sauver leur vie, quoi. Et ça, c'est une question qui va être importante pour l'Europe. On est au 21e siècle, on est dans une ville européenne et on a des tirs de missiles de croisière comme si on était en Irak ou en Afghanistan. Vous imaginez? And not to be outdone, Al Jazeera of all places said that these are prosperous people, these are middle class people, these aren't refugees from Middle East or North African countries, these are European countries, they could be your neighbors. It's just amazing to me that the people who scream all lives matter and claim that they don't see color, suddenly see color, and suddenly only specific types of lives matter to them, namely those without the same type of melanin as the rest of us. And now reports are coming in that they are blocking African refugees at gunpoint at the Ukraine-Poland border while admitting Ukrainian refugees. Poland is the same country that was literally occupied by Nazis. Racism will kill us. We must protect all refugees, black, white, and brown, because they are human beings and deserve it. One thing that has really stood out you know, has really shone a light on where I'm concerned and has really stuck out to me is that in the midst of all of this, in the midst of people trying to flee from their homes, in the midst of them trying to dodge bullets and bombs and bombardment, they still have time for racism. Mm -hmm. Because you've got thousands of, of, of black, Asian, Syrian, Arab students and, and workers who have been also trying to get out of Ukraine and have been prevented from doing so due to the incessant racism that they have experienced. They've not been allowed to go through borders. There have been quite a few of them not been allowed to go through the border into Poland, for example, mm -hmm. where they've been pushed back. We're looking at some of the uh, footage now that people have been posting up. They've been pushed back. They, there, are, there are posters up saying no blacks. They have been pulled off buses that have been trying to get through um, the border because they have been not allowed to leave because they've been seen as being less than. And I think that really does shine a light on the fact that it doesn't matter how devastated somebody is, how scared somebody is, they seem to always have time for some of the worst traits of humanity. And there are British students as well. There's a black British student called Corinne Skye who's been tweeting mm. over the past week of her desperate travels, her desperation to try and get out of Ukraine and get back home to here, and has been fought back by Ukrainian troops, have been pushed back by Ukrainian people who do not feel, who, who believe that the black people need to be at the back of the bus.
Essentially, that's what we're talking about here. And I just think that I, I, my heart really does go out to the Ukrainian people and those who are in those bordering countries who are doing all they can to try and help them, but will not help anybody whose skin is darker. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a very, a very clear reflection of what it is that the world is dealing with. And this isn't just in Ukraine. Mm -hmm. This happens in wars the world, the world over, especially when it comes to migrant workers. The difference, I think, this time is it's a younger demographic who are used to posting on TikTok, on Twitter, on Facebook, and they're telling their story. And I really hope that people understand when we talk about things like... Yeah, but... I I yeah, here comes the gaslighter. You know they're always there. But, 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 but what's Janet? Tell us. Let's hear it. No, I hear what you're saying and I completely understand it. And on the news last night, they did show some of the students talking about how badly they had been treated and the effort that had, it had taken for them to actually yeah, get on the train and cross the yeah. border. But I also think that Poland, for example, has exceeded all expectations in accepting mm. 150,000... Oh so, wait, if I'm getting this correctly, the information that Poland was not letting any black person into Poland went literally above this woman's head and she went straight to, let's praise Poland for taking in 160,000 people into Poland and none of those people were black. And these people left without taking the blacks. Man. None of the blacks, man. See, see. No. Even the black guys that already have kids, they took their kids and their wife and left the niggas behind. Like, everyone is stranded. We are not allowing any black people to enter inside this. We are all here. It's only Ukrainians that they are allowing in. Even the ones with kids, they're not allowing them in. So let's not talk about the problem that they did not let black people in. Let's praise Poland. Yes, Poland was, you know, good enough to take in people. But we should not talk about the fact that they were inhumane to black people and they did not take any black person in. All of them were left outside in the cold. Even children. A two-month-old baby was left out in the cold. The people that weren't left in, coincidentally, all of them were black. I mean, they would like to say it's a coincidence. You need to see how these people are justifying what happened on TikTok. It's sickening. The excuses they've made, mind-blowing. And for those people that come with these excuses, excuse number one, um, they were probably letting just women and children in. <laughs> That was a woman and a child. And excuse number two, they were probably only letting their citizen first, citizen preference, right? What are the chances that the two-month-old baby isn't a citizen? Make it make sense. And one question I want to ask people really, when there is war, are we supposed to be doing citizen or not? Thinking about it, is that humane? We like to talk about humanity, humanity, all life matter. I'm sure some people that even had dogs, their dogs were let on. That's me. Refugees. I understand that. But if you have thousands but of refugees, you can't stand there and say, Absolutely. oh, you 50 people come in, you four people I, with darker I, skin. Sorry. I but know, but this isn't, isn't a surprise, this isn't a surprise to a, anyone who has I moved, think, any asylum seeker who's moved across but Europe I think has met people, this in Hungary and other of countries. People, to a lot of people, it will come as a surprise. Mm. It didn't come as a surprise to me because I am a black woman who's travelled through Europe and I've dealt with a lot of the ups and downs that that, that, that can come with. I have come, I've tra I know I love travelling, but you always have to make a judgement call about how to deal with certain situations as a result of mm. the colour of my skin in the way that you won't have to, Janet. Mm. So I think, yes, it does well, happen, but this has really shone a light in a way that perhaps... You know, a lot of people watch this programme may well not realise just how difficult it can be. Well, I think if they watch the documentary about the family that crossed all the way from Syria right across Europe last year, which was like an award-winning documentary, everybody realises that anyway, but all the... If they watch the documentary, so white people have to watch a documentary for them to come to the realisation and understanding of something terrible that happens on a daily basis right in front of their eyes, but they have to watch a documentary to understand it. So are they saying now that we would need a documentary of what happened um, with the train situation at Poland?
Are we really ever going to make heads well with this rate to the season situation if we have to wait for every single white person to watch a documentary for them to understand it? How, how long will it take for every one of them? Oh my God. Eastern European borders are places that are fraught with all sorts of tension. I think it's easy, as you know, we're both journalists, I think it's easy for us to say everybody knows, everybody doesn't okay. know. And that's the point of having programmes like this, I think, and we talk about the things mm. that we do.